Welcome to our Earth Day. We're going to play a beautiful song for you. The song is called Soraya, and it's the calling of the ancestors. together celebrating Earth Day and I am here with our community of Taino and friends and you're going to meet everyone um, as this event goes on and so why are we here well as the as the world has celebrated Earth Day over the last few days I know that there are many of you out there who love the earth every day that's for sure the question that we have to ask ourselves right now in this time is what is the difference between loving and taking care of the earth and having a relationship with nature? And there is a difference. And in this moment in time, when the earth is in all the crisis that it's in, and I won't list it because we'll be here forever, but you know what I mean. And in this moment when the earth is in crisis, having a relationship with the earth is going to matter. But the good news is that for every person, just like a relationship that you have in your life, every relationship is different and every relationship is personal. And so let's explore that question together, right? So as we go on today, we are going to uh, be hearing the voices of our Taino and Friends community as well as our children who are going to share with them what it means to them. So what does it mean to Tekinairu? Okay, so for Tekinairu, I'll just give a few simple examples from my everyday life. For me, taking care of the earth is about 
going outside in the morning and putting seeds for the birds. That's what it means to take care of the earth. Okay, what does it mean to have a relationship? Well, it crosses into relationship when I take my flute and I go sit on the porch and I play for the birds and they come to the tree and they start singing like the one that just started singing a little while ago. And they're singing with me as I'm singing to them. And as I play a special song, they're sitting on the branches and they're pruning their feathers and getting vitamin D. And that is relationship. What's another example? Another example is I can put seeds out to grow flowers for the pollinators right? Flowers so that the bees can come and drink and, and flowers so the butterflies can come and drink of the nectar. Um, that's about taking care of the earth. Looks like my mic is falling. Okay, there we go. It crosses into relationship, okay? When I go out and visit those flowers every day and I cheer them up as they're sprouting through the ground, and when they have bulbs of flowers about to burst and I go out and I thank them and I give them so much praise. And so you might think, really? I mean, <laughs> you're talking to flowers. Do they hear you? Of course they hear you. And so I have a story. So one day, several years ago, I was in a plant store and I found a plant called Canaria. And so those of you from Puerto Rico, I know you know what I mean, Canaria. And it's a beautiful plant that has a yellow flower. And so my Taino ancestors used to wear the flower right here. The ladies would wear the flower. And it's kind of like, a, almost like a Hawaiian tradition, but it's a, a Taino tradition with this yellow flower. So when I found this plant, I was so excited about the plant. I brought it home and it had beautiful flowers. And that was the last year it ever bloomed. It didn't bloom anymore. And then I realized, you know, you don't have a relationship with this plant. You just bought it and you put it there and you throw water on it and you're taking care of it. But where is the relationship? So I started to talk to it every morning. I would say good morning and I would whisper in her ear of the little leaves and I would say yellow flowers, yellow flowers flowers every morning yellow flowers well did you know that that year I got yellow flowers after so many years of having those plants so those are two examples of what it means to take care of the earth and have a relationship with the earth and again what I want to say is that in this time when the earth is going through a crisis when things are pretty much out of our hands, that having a relationship with the earth is going to matter. And so I would like you to listen to the presentations today and think about how you can have a personal relationship with the earth in a way that is special for you. Okay, so we're going to welcome our first presenter of our Taino and Friends, and we're going to do it with a song. And uh, I'm going to dip down here and get another flute. And this song is called Taidi Keng, which in Taino means welcome. And I'm going to wait so patiently because my wonderful husband, David, is both the Mayo Acanero and the cameraman. Okay, here we go.
Ricky C. Yamo Ka, Yamo Fu. Okay, so with much happiness, I want to introduce you to Sky and her beautiful son, who um, they're going to do a, big, a better pres uh, introduction to themselves, and they're going to do a beautiful presentation. Mother and son, we're so excited to have them with us, and we're so excited to hear the voice of the children, because the children are so important in this question of relationship. So. All right. So, are you ready, Sky? Almost? Okay. All right. So, and I want you to um, take notice of the beautiful um, altar that she has created in the center. And, um, okay. Are you ready? All right. Bonjour and Desnikas, Zoran Howell, Bad Waterman, Adwa, Indau. Bonjour and Desnikas, Sky Howell, Bad Waterman, Adwa, Indau. My name is Sky Howell of the Potawatomi and Ottawa Tribal Nations. My pronouns are she, her, and hers. And it is a great honor to be in community and celebration of Earth Day today. And my pronouns is he, him, and his. Right. And Zorn and I are so excited today. We've got some really fantastic sharings of culture and very important things to share about our relationship to the Earth. And we want to just begin uh, with a Potawatomi tradition related to the Potawatomi medicine wheel. And so we begin by honoring the spirits and inviting the spirits of the East, which are the children. And we hope to receive the messages that they bring us. We also honor and we invite the spirits of the South, the adults. May we grow and we learn together. We also honor and invite the spirits of the West, the adults and the ancestors, may they guide us on our journey. And we also invite the spirits in the, of the north, which are the Medmen Way and Medwen Way. What do they do, Zoran? Medmen Way. I don't know. They're the healers, right? Yeah. Which we really and need. And don't forget about the, the like, ancestors. Yeah, which and was our ancestors. the fourth one. Mm -hmm. And so we just invite and we honor them as we begin today. We also really want to honor... Dr. Takina Aru Maynard for being here and making this celebration so important to us, um, to each of our friends who are here today that we are celebrating with, Rich and Mia and Rick and David, thank you so much for being here today and celebrating with all of us. This is such an important tradition that we have now and we're excited to be back. And so we want to honor the original stewards of this land and region the Komokururo, the Cariso, the Tonkawa, the Karankawa, and one of the oldest known tribes to this region, the Kowaltekan. We further honor the federally recognized tribes, the Alabama Cachada tribe of Texas, and the Kickapoo traditional tribe of Texas, the Isleta del Ser Pueblo. We want to honor the state recognized tribes, the La Pan Apache tribe, the Yaqui band of Indians, and we also honor all of the original inhabitants of this land. We further here in Austin honor all those who have had to relocate due to gentrification and the impacts, and we honor and we acknowledge that. We honor all those whose hearts are hurting right now due to the impacts of systemic racism that we face in our daily life and our environmental racism that we see. And we're going to be sharing a book today that's going to talk a little bit more about that as well. And we honor all those who continue to fight daily and we support and we're in solidarity with everyone who are fighting due to their race, their nationality, their religion, the languages they speak, due to the oppressions that they face, due to anything that may be challenging to them. And we hope that 
as a whole and as a community, we can do our parts to overcome the hatred and the racism that people face every day. So megwatch, and thank you for joining us today. So we'd like to start off with, what's our first activity, Zorin? What are we going to be corn making? Cornhouse dolls. Cornhouse dolls, yeah. And we want to tell you a little bit more about the cornhouse doll and why it is that the cornhouse dolls have no face, right? And so there's a special story about why it is a cornhouse doll traditionally has no face. And the reason for that is because there was a spirit, the corn spirit, right? Sustained the earth, nurtured the earth, and we get to eat the corn and we enjoy the three sisters, the corn and the beans, right? And we also- What's about the third one? the squash right and we enjoy those and nourish the that nourishes us it sustains us um, and the corn spirit was so excited to sustain everybody with the food but wanted something more wanted to do something more for the earth and wanted to do something more for the children so the corn spirit visited with the great spirit and said I want to do something more and the great spirit said go and create a doll from your husks and go be with the children. So the corn spirit created this beautiful doll and it had the most beautiful face. And everyone, everywhere, the children she played with, the villagers all said, you're so beautiful. And pretty soon she got to be distracted by that beauty. And she was looking into the lakes and she wasn't even playing with the children anymore. And so the great spirit noticed. The great spirit said, you know what? We need to do something different. We need to think about what is happening and why you're not playing with the children and this is not the intention that we have. And so the corn spirit agreed and the great spirit said, if this happens again, there's going to be a consequence for this. So the great, the corn spirit left and went out and looked again and admired herself in the lake. But this time she had no face. Right? Yeah. And so this time, the Great Spirit said, nobody is any better or any worse than anyone else. And so if you're admiring yourself and you're thinking that you're better than others, that is not right and that is not how we do. And so that is why traditionally, the corn husk doll does not have a face. And that is from the Oneida Nation. And so we share that story as we share this activity. All right, you ready to get started with our corn husks? Yeah. Yeah, all right. So what we need to do is we're gonna need to grab four corn husks. Can you grab four corn husks and then hand them to me? And you can use corn husks from corn that you are going to eat. You can also buy corn husk already prepared. Um, so there's a lot of different ways that you can make your corn husk stall. If you do buy corn husks that are dried out, you just wanna make sure that you soak the corn husks, sit down right here, okay? And you soak the corn husks so that they're flexible and so that you can, you can make them, all right? And so the first thing that we're gonna do, we've got about four corn husks. And so what we're going to do is we're gonna use some twine. You're gonna need some twine and you're gonna need some scissors. If you don't have twine, you can also use rubber bands. So we've got our twine, twine here. Twine is going to be the yarn that we used, which I, ah, there we go, it's hiding. Also, you, wait, can you have me do it? Mm -hmm. Yep. Also, you can use regular string. Yep, you can use regular string. You can also use yarn, right? So what you're gonna do is just cut a small piece of yarn right here, and we're gonna tie it to the top of the corn husk, okay? And that's going to be what we're gonna use for our head. We're gonna tie that up pretty tight, really tight because this, you want it to be really sturdy. You're gonna tie that really tight. Does that look pretty tight? What do you think? I think it can be a little tighter. All right, I'm gonna get super tight. There we go. That's good. Yeah, all right. And then you can double knot it if you want so that way it stays. Okay, and then we're going to turn it upside down, right? And so this is gonna be used for our head and we're going to just tie another knot around here. So that'll be the top of our head. Okay, you're gonna cut that. 
We just need a small string for that one. There you go. All right, perfect. And now we're gonna need the, coming up next, we're gonna do the arms. So can you get um, one skinny one and we're gonna roll it up tight to make the arms. Okay, and then we're just gonna roll. This one's already rolled up. Okay, roll it up this super tight so that it can be the arms. Actually, here, now. That looks good. Okay, you can also trim it if you want to make things even. All right, this so we've got our head, and what we're gonna do, perfect. What we're gonna do is we're gonna put our arms right in the middle here and so it's going to stick out on either side okay i think i might cut off this part perfect that works that's super long but this one doesn't have a long one so and we can actually just use one of these so we can just roll it up tight and it's going to be long enough for both arms okay all right I love the bird song. We have a beautiful bird song in the background. I'm not sure if y'all can hear that, but it sounds beautiful. All right, does that look good for our arms? Yes. All right, let's scoot over so our friends can see. Here we go. All right, so now we're gonna have another small string so we can make the waist. It wasn't too big. Yeah. When it was first pulled up. All right. And we're just going to tie it around the waist here. Okay. And just scoot over a little bit so our friends can see our doll. All right. Can make that. Tie that up there. Yeah. All right. And now what we're going to do is, are we going to cut those laces yet? Yeah, we can cut the laces off. Okay, so go ahead and cut the laces off. And then we're problem, and then we're gonna get some corners to do something over here. Like on the bottom, remember the video that we watched? Yeah, there we go. And then she trimmed the bottom a little bit, but yeah. you don't have to do that. Okay. Right, you don't have to cut the bottom a little bit no you can do it so it however you want so if you like the way that it's looking if you want it to be um, a dress or a skirt then you can just leave it just like that um, and you can even out the arms a little bit so why don't we go ahead and you want to cut them or do you want to leave them just like that I think we should cut it like okay that. go ahead Looks like I can still see where my finger was. Yeah. Okay, is that good? All right. Yeah. And so there I think we, we have. Cut this one. I think I could that one. Okay. Too sure. Go ahead. Wait. All right. And then this one needs to be cut. There, okay. we can even it out. Perfect. All right, can you show everyone at home that we've made it? All right, so that's how you make your corn husk doll. And so that, and that's the story of the corn husk doll. So we thank you for, for walking with this journey and we hope that this is something that you can do at home um, with your family. Yeah, let's thank it, let's thank it. Yeah. Beautiful. Is that, was that your, the, the, your presentation? Okay, all right, well, great. Okay, so now we're going to move on to the next set of presentations, but first, there has to be music. So, we're going to do another song, and this song is dedicated to the Creator and to Mother Earth. And so, with great patience, we're going to wait for our wonderful cameraman to come over here and share this song with us. And in Taino language, the word for uh, Mother Earth is Atabe. And so, and the name for the creator is Semihin Yaya. And so this song is dedicated to both. The 
this is this is the song that starts with the rolling maraca. There you go. Okay, so, all right, so we're going to hear from Rick, and then we're, you're going to read a story, and then she's going to read a story, and then we're going to have a little uh, hands-on workshop by Atani. So, let's start with Rick. So, let's pass over the lapel mic, and you can do a nicer job of introducing yourself. So, yeah, unmute yourself. Thank you. Hello, everyone. My name is Rick, and um, I grew up in Oklahoma, and I've been part of the Puerto Rican Center here for, for a few years now, and I really appreciate everything that I've learned from Takina and, and, and everyone here. So I just can't thank everyone enough. Um, today, I, I wanted to think about what it means to have a personal relationship with with nature when I think about a personal relationship I think about listening and I can't emphasize that enough uh, the importance of listening also finding common ground and respecting differences and even celebrating differences so if, you, if you're going to create a personal relationship with, with nature, then first I, I encourage you to be uh, completely present in the moment, to, um, to, not, to put away your cell phone, to, to not think about work or the things you have to do or the other things that are going on in your life, but, but to be in, in the moment. And there, there is nature that's all around. It might be in your house, it might be in your yard, it might be in a nearby open field. So, you know, if, if you want to create a relationship with, with a plant or a tree, I, I encourage you to see them as, as individuals all in their own right. And so, 
So to create a relationship, I encourage you to use all your senses. If there's a tree in your yard or a plant in your home, to, to, to create that relationship, I encourage you to, to be present, to, to look at it, to, to see it, to, to see it for, for who it is. The bark, the leaves, the branches, just how majestic it really is. And I encourage you to use all your senses, to, to smell, to feel, to listen, and even when appropriate, to taste. Using all your senses to, to experience a, a relationship with, with nature. And, and I also encourage you to, to talk to the, to the plant that you're encouraging to get a, a relationship with. Back in the 70s, there was actually a thing where they said that if you talk to your house plants, that your house plants would thrive and would be healthier. And I remember think, my family and, and friends thinking that was a really odd concept. But, um, but I encourage it. And just like Takina said earlier, talking to the plant or tree that you're establishing a, a personal relationship with is an important piece of it, or can be. And to listen. I think you should listen. You should be listening even more than, than you're talking. So I also encourage you to use your mind, the, the vision in your mind, to, to see the tree that you're connecting with. To see it when it was a seedling. To see it when it was growing and reaching up through the soil touching the sun for the first time of its life as it grows and, and lives through the seasons and the challenges that we all go through through life, realizing that the trees and nature go through their challenges as well. And also with your mind, you can see the energy, the energy that flows through the trees and the plants, and recognize it's the same energy of life that flows through each one of us. We're used to the energy of each other affecting one another, whether it's when somebody enters a room, you feel the energy change, or maybe you're in a crowd and you feel the energy of the crowd. Well, the same energy flows through the trees and flows through nature, and recognizing that energy, that energy of life, can, can benefit your relationship with, with nature. And, and finally, when, when you recognize all that, that, that this isn't just something green in your house or something green in your yard, but actually a living, breathing entity that, that, that you're connecting with, then it becomes more than just a tree, but becomes your neighbor, becomes your friend. And, th and that's what I have to say. That's beautiful. Thank you so much. Let's roll our maracas and thank him for that. Okay. And now we're going to have a story. Skye's brought a beautiful book and going to share a story with us. So, all right. So let's get our lovelier mic over to her. All right. This is just like a low-tech, relaxed <laughs> event. <laughs> yes, it is. Thank you for that, right? I think we need more of that, more of that slowing down. Mm -hmm. the book. Right? Would you like to start us off? Sure. Okay. And so well, let's, let's talk a little bit about the book and why we chose that, right? Okay, so mm -hmm. let's start with that piece of it, okay? So why did I we feel, choose this book? I feel like it's big. Well, I don't know why you brought it. But I think it's because water is life. Water is life, right? Because so, without water, then more than two days, you will die. That's right. Water is life, right? And water is in everything and everywhere, right? And it's so important for us to honor that, right? And I think one thing that's important about a relationship with the earth and with nature, right, is reciprocity, right? So we have to not just take, but we also have to give back, right? 
And this book really talks about how we can give back as a people, as water protectors, right? And so this is a really important book. It's won the Caldecott Award. So it's a very special book. Hey, Mom. And it's also, Mom, just one moment. Okay, well, we'll get a drink of water just right here. There's a water bottle. But we're going to read our book and then we'll, we'll, speaking of water, right? That makes you thirsty, huh? Here we go. All right. <laughs> Um, so this is written by Carol Lindstrom and illustrated by Michaela Goad. Okay, and it's called We Are Water Protectors, and it's got beautiful illustrations. Please, please, please buy this book. Support Native authors, um, and I hope that we hope that you enjoy this book. It's it's a beautiful, beautiful story. Yeah. So, I think Zorin's going to start us off with reading okay. some parts here. We are water, water protectors. Keep the mic close to your, to your mouth so they can hear. Okay. Water is the first medica- medicine Nokahamas told me. We come from water. It nourishes us inside our mother's body and it nourishes us here on Mother Earth. What is sacred, she said. Water. If you don't know what nourished means, it's, what is it again? It's, it's uh, taking care of us, right? It's taking care of us. Yeah. We stand with our songs, we stand and our drums. We are still here. The river, the river's rhythm runs through my veins, runs through my people's veins. My people talk of a black snake that will destroy the land. There's a black snake. Yeah. I didn't see that in the book, but I guess it's in that picture. Yeah, it's in all of these pictures. The pictures tell us the story, right? Mm-hmm. Spoil the water, poison plants and animals. Wreck. Wreck everything in its path. When my people first spoke of the black snake, they foretold that it wouldn't come for many years. Now the black snake is here. Its venom burdens the land, courses through the water makes it unfit to drink. Take courage. It might mu- I must keep black snake away from my village's water. I must rally my people together. So we each have a part, right? Mm-hmm. We all work together. To stand for the water, to stand for the land. To stand as one against the black snake. Black snake. We stand with our songs and our drums. We are still here. It will not be easy. Do we give up if it's not easy? No. We fight for those who cannot fight for themselves. We winged... The winged? Winged ones, the crawling ones. We have a lot of winged and crawling friends here that we've met just today, right? Mm Mm-hmm. 
the four-legged, the two-legged, the plants, trees, rivers, lakes. We are all like the earth. We are all related. Tears like waterfalls stream down, down track, tracks. Tracks down, down my face. Tracks down my face. Tracks down my people's faces. Get your makeup too, so <laughs> Water is alive. Water remembers our in ancestors. ancestors who came before us, she says. Said. She said. We stand with our songs and our drums. We are still here. We are stewards of the earth. We are strolled of the earth. Our sprints, spirits, our spirits have not been broken. We are water protectors. The black snake is in our for the fight. Is in for the fight of its life. Water is life, many Wakani. No nabble. Protect the sacred. Stand with. Standing rock. With standing rock. Standing rock. So that is one of uh, a beautiful story that we wanted to be able to share with you. You okay? Yeah. All right. Come sit down. And. We appreciate you listening to this important story, and we just invite you to consider the ways that you can have a reciprocal relationship with nature. So not just taking from nature, but giving back, standing up, speaking out, and doing that. It doesn't matter how big or how small you are, right, Zoran? Everyone has a voice, and we can use yep. it. Anything else you want to say about your relationship with nature? I just think every creature deserves to live. Every creature deserves to live. That's right. That's right. And we, again, appreciate the honor of being here in community with you all. I wanted to share also, as we were sharing the cornhouse dogs earlier, my great-grandmother, Warren. She was not native. Um, however, she made this beautiful doll for me um, and also for my brother. And so I just wanted to share... Just a little piece of, of a very important um, family gift to us um, and, and also um, this beautiful turtle that one of our friends, Nan, um, from Native American Notions um, made for us. And so we have some important, important loveys along the way that we wanted to share and we just encourage you to continue to develop your relationship with nature. You can start as a child and as very, very young and it continues through every generation. So, right. Let's give a big roll of the maraca. And especially from hearing that beautiful story. Thank you so much for sharing. It's important to hear the voice of the children. And so we are, we're so grateful that you're here today. And speaking of, um, Youth, we have one more presentation, and it's by Atani, and she's uh, part of our Taino and Friends community and our Puerto Rican Cultural Center, and she has a beautiful presentation to share, and we all get to help her. So let's uh, gather here around the table. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. 
And go ahead and attach it to yourself so that way you have your hands free. Come on, guys, don't be shy. Okay, we don't bite here. <laughs> okay, so um, we're gonna first start out by passing around some baggies. So tell, so tell me, uh, tell us what what we're doing, kind of like a. Um, since the theme of this is about having a relationship with the earth, it's very important that we, like everybody has been saying kind of keep a part of the earth in you not just listening and obviously taking care of it but also taking responsibility responsibility of it sorry and so what we are going to create is a necklace that goes right here and so um do you want to start no you go ahead okay <laughs> <laughs> sorry um we're gonna start off by each one of us grabbing a shell. If you pick your favorite. <laughs> okay. Now with the shell, we're gonna grab a bit of dirt. I can be the trusty assistant. <laughs> <laughs> We're using it as a scooper. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> it's gonna get a bit messy, but that's okay. Okay. All right, let's pass it down here. Here you go. It's no fun unless you get dirty. <laughs> that's what loving Earth is all about, getting your hands in the soil. <laughs> Is that one yours? Yep, that one's mine. Oh yeah, oh, one's yours too. Okay. Oh, where's mine? Right here. Oh yeah. <laughs> Perfect. Thank you. All right, this is beautiful, and we'll we'll put stuff in in here, but you can keep going. Okay. And so after that, for the people that already have dirt, we're going to grab one black sunflower seed. So would you like to take one? Right, thank you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Hey, we're, I thought we were like making places. We yeah. are. Sunflower places? Yeah. So we're going to put it in here. Cover it with dirt, more dirt. Okay. More dirt. See, this is like a cooking. This is like a cooking show. We can trade. So this one, you can massage the dirt. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> I feel like this is too much. Okay. Well, we can use it in both of our bags. How about that? All right. Okay, so now what happens? <laughs> now, now that we have kind of our little baggie, yeah. we're gonna get some string. Do we put the seed in the soil? Yes. Oh, sorry, <laughs> <laughs> I was waiting for it to be told to do that. So. You're not supposed to eat the sunflower seeds. <laughs> not these anyway. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because they're covered in dirt. Yeah. I was just saving it to make sure I didn't lose it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we're going to take a little bit of string. Okay. Thank you. All right. And let's... Uh... Oh, this one. Thank this you. One you can keep going while okay. I cut the string for everybody. Now this okay. is the fun part. We're going to get to decorate it and make it our own. So we have a few beads. You put it through the hole. Do you need help? No. All right. Does anybody need a longer string? Probably. Bless you. Okay. It can be too long. We're not going to tie it yet because we got to decorate it, right? So we're going to be picking out. Yeah, so we get to pick out what beat you want to use to decorate. 
So I'll yeah, give you guys these. Right All right. Yeah. Well, we can just kind of open them like this and spread them, spread them out. So. Plain color, large, extra small. All right. I think I just want a simple two little black ones. No big surprise there, right? <laughs> you hear the birds serenading us? <laughs> okay. So, so tell us more uh, about this. So after we make this and then we put water and and then we put it around our neck and and why are we why are we doing that um so as we said plants can hear us plants can feel and so it's kind of like raising your own plant it hears your heartbeat it hears what you feel Aww. and so a way for it it's kind of like it understands you and since we're talking about relationship with the earth once the flower starts to sprout, you give to the earth. You give, you plant the seed in it, and in return, it gives you oxygen. Aww. Like how we give carbon dioxide, we give to the plant, and then it gives us H. Oh, I'm sorry, oxygen. Well, that's so. beautiful. And so, so then the plant starts growing here in this little package, and then how, and then when the plant grows, uh, how do? We, so what do we do? When the plant grows, we carefully take it out of here and then we plant it into the grass. Okay, how do we know when it's ready? Um, we know when it's ready when you see a sprout coming out of it. That, that's how you know it's, it wants to come out and it's basically telling you, hey, I want to go back to Mother Nature. <laughs> so you do the favor of planting it. Awesome. And so what kind of uh, flower are we going to get out of this? We're going to get a sunflower seed. Oh, a sunflower yeah. seed. What am I supposed to do with it at night? Oh, what is he supposed to do with it at night is his question. That's a good question. Hmm. Does he sleep with it or does he take it off? If you move a lot, I recommend to take it off unless you want dirt. <laughs> but I think keep it near you. You can take it off and keep it near you. But obviously, if you have a window, let the sun also take care of it. Did we miss the water and stuff? We have water there, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> All right, well, we can come back and finish. Uh, I might, Dakina might have made the ropes a little too short. <laughs> so we can come back after we uh, finish the closing song and we can make ourselves a longer, um, a longer um, koyan. But in the meantime, let's thank Atani for her beautiful presentation. Yay! Yeah. Rolling our imaginary maraca. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So let's uh, let's go back and end with our closing number, celebrating uh, Earth Day and all of the beautiful things that we learned. Okay, we're gonna come back and uh, we're gonna come back and finish our necklace. I think the Kina. Uh, <laughs> The Kinairu uh, cut the strings a little too short, <laughs> but we're gonna go back and finish ours later. I have the tree here blessing me with uh, is this pollen? What is this? Little flowers You're dropping them on my head. Thank you. <laughs> and so we're so happy about today and everything that we've learned. And so we're going to close with an exciting uh, number. Um, so this is called Areito Bajio. And so if you are at home with a maraca and dance with us, because this is a joyful piece, right? Okay.
Thank you so much for joining us in our little sharing dedicated to Earth Day. We hope that our presentations today have given you some thought. There's no right or wrong way to have a relationship, not with anyone and not with the Earth. So if, if anything else, our biggest dream from today is if you think about what calls to you, how is nature calling to you? What kind of special relationship can you have with the earth that no one else can have? Just you and Mother Earth. And so I hope that that happens for each and every one of you who are listening. Uh, and by the way, tonight, uh, come back to the page tonight. We're going to have one more presentation from Marianne Melton. She's a master naturalist. And she put together a video and special presentation with her grandson, and we'll be sharing that tonight. So thank you, everybody. Let's roll our maracas and say goodbye.